Ah, uh, welcome back. It feels a bit like a homecoming. Coming back to the 1950s cars in our factor too. This time for the 1956 set of cars and league, I guess you'd call it. This is the same league that Southpaw Racer runs, and I can see he's in the race today. Although I have a feeling he's gonna he's gonna be be up front, and I may not. Welcome back. Hello out there. I'm here today to do uh, just a one-off, just fun race. This is 100% for me, just 100% fun today. Do some slipstreaming and racing around Monza with the HSO League, and uh, these guys have put on. Uh, for the last year straight, at least, just series with with this mod that uh, we raced last fall for the HRRC. And uh, I've been meaning to join one for a long time and just finally finally put it together to do it today. But it's going to be a little tricky today. Uh, we're racing around Monza, and I am racing a Ferrari, which sounds like the perfect combination. But I think I'm a little bit down on top speed overall, so I have no idea how well I'll be able to do today. We've got a decent grid of... Uh, three liter category cars and I think I'll be quicker than some but unlikely anybody on raw pace is going to match the uh, Lancias and Jags that are up front there and so it'll be an interesting one to see uh, just how how fast am I and uh, and see if we can have a little fun fun along the way but I appreciate y'all tuning in uh, I know there's other stuff going on right now and everything we're about one hour away from the start of the race just so you all know uh, we've got We've got about 10 minutes, 14 minutes left to practice. We've got an hour qualifying session, kind of like a practice slash qualifying, and then we jump into the race. So uh, the race will be about an hour from now, a little over an hour from now. But I am going to go out here and do a couple, couple uh, laps just to warm myself up before we jump into the qualifying, and I will put my race setup on. I've been working on my setup this week a little bit, and um, trying to, trying to just get things familiar get re-familiarized with this with this mod and how these cars drive because it is definitely different especially than the rally stuff i've been doing lately i appreciate y'all tuning in <clears throat> for it and uh hopefully it'll be fun I, I like always with these things i just hope hope i can find somebody else to race with and um i'd be pretty content with that even if it's for last place as long as we're racing with somebody else and there's a good bit of strategy and back and forth with it that's all I really want. All right, we'll come out of the pit. So, so we got, like I said, about, I can see it on the clock up there. Whoa, about 13 minutes left in practice. So just do a couple quick laps. I got full fuel on right now. And as always, let me know how things sound if the car is too loud or something. I can fix that. And show you all the course, I guess. This is the Monza Oval, the classic Monza Oval Circuit, so out of the pit lane we're on the oval, but this is actually the end of the lap. Put it up to fourth gear, just a four speed in the Ferrari. So this is the end of the lap coming around the oval, and uh, we'll actually start a time lap once we come out onto the front stretch. But in the Ferrari here, so I found it fairly easy to, to race flat out around the oval, but the higher I can drive on the oval, the closer to the wall I get, the faster I will go. So, we'll have to see how, uh, during qualifying, I am gonna hug this guardrail. During the race, we might give it a little bit of a breath, but like, even closer than this would be ideal. You just gain a little bit of top speed being up this high. Uh, you obviously don't wanna hit it, but you can get a little bit of a, I guess we'll call it the Monza strike. We'll come out onto the front stretch though. So this is where we'll start the race on the grid here and you do a full lap of the Grand Prix course and then the oval ends it. And uh, this car is a chore on the road circuit. It is not easy to drive at all. I'm gonna have to be on my best behavior today. Remember my braking marks, don't get too excited. But it's been, been about a year since I really drove these cars in full, uh, full anger. I could definitely tell. <laughs> I start. I did a couple laps last weekend and realized how out of practice I was. So had to uh, had to do a little bit of extra practice this week. But it's been a lot of fun getting back with them. They such a great 
set of cars and mod and everything. Uh, I did see a comment in the chat before, so... This is the same mod we raced last year, but it's been updated a whole bunch in the last year by, uh, you know, all the folks in the league and everything and the original creators of it. I think Mantus is actually in here today, one of the creators. And uh, they've upgraded it to include, for this specifically, the 1956 cars themselves. So there's been a lot of changes here. One of the big changes is it is very possible to blow your engine. And I'm going to have to be pretty careful about that. I did, I did do it once in practice. <laughs> I need to get a, a Firestone or Dunlop hat. This is just my hat, man. Yeah, sideways is better. I, I'm also most likely going to be doing a... a almost 99% sure I'm doing the 1,000 uh, kilometer race. And so I did also see this, although this is on a different version of the circuit being being the straight oval without the chicanes and everything. Um, it'll be a good practice just to get back into R Factor 2 a little bit because that's, that's its own thing as well. Come around the oval. I think I'm catching a Cunningham here. Jackson ooh, did get the stripe. It's all right. We're all right. Yeah, we got Jackson in front then. We raced quite a lot in the HRRC last year. I think I might be quicker than the Cunninghams, but Jackson's pretty handy behind the wheel, so. <laughs> You're going to have to go watch Nico Hillebrand for the uh, period correctness. I think he's got the goggles and everything. All right. Gaining. This will be. This is some of my first running with other cars. We got one, one car that hasn't loaded in yet because I'm on the track. That'll fix itself. But we're coming down to turn one, and we'll see if I can make a late pass here on Jackson. It's good. Good time to try it out, I guess, in practice. He breaks pretty early as well, so quite a narrow entry though. It's going to be a tricky one. He's going to have a better line through the corner than me, but not going to be able to stick it in there. Oh, the Cunningham. That car is a beast. The biggest thing in these cars is just the braking distances are so long. It's uh, You really have to be patient and make sure you don't miss your braking because there's just no saving it. Like a modern car, you just lock up the brakes and maybe run a little wide or something. But these cars, they just don't stop. So if, you, if you're late on the brakes, you're just going off the track. There's no, no way around it. When you're late, you're really late, I've found. Yeah, we're doing we're doing a full 500 kilometer race today, or full, I guess that's half the historic distance. It's gonna be a long race. It's gonna be over a couple hours, maybe two and a half hours or something. So it's gonna be a decently long and uh, a good amount of driving. We'll do one more lap and then come into the pits just to uh, just to make sure I know how to do that. We got a car up on the banking there. I've done that. Really gentle on the acceleration coming out of the straight. It's pretty easy to get the car to kind of roll sideways, and it, it really doesn't like a lot of throttle with the wheel crank. So you got to be very very careful with it. Got Larry. So slow cars or slower classes have been told to stay on the low side of the banking. Or if you're getting lapped, you know, you stay down low, let the faster cars go to the outside. So we'll see how that how that works today. There's a big jump there. Coming out of I guess you call it turn two on the oval. streaming at a normal time well <laughs> what is normal it's a global global world I guess yeah if you're curious to learn more about the mod or this league or anything I, I did link the HSO website in the description of the stream and uh, you can check out there 
everything about it. These guys race a lot of different types of stuff, so this is just one one of many racing series that they have. 243. I don't know, that's the leader. Okay. Alright, we'll come around. I'm gonna pit this lap just to try a pit in. Make sure make sure I can get slowed into my box. We will have to pit in this race, of course. It'll be a uh, I think it's gonna be a single stopper for me unless we get into trouble or something. But I should just have to pit once. And so maybe some of the faster cars will have to pit more, who knows? I do, I do think though we're very much gonna be racing for best of the rest. <laughs> outside of the Jags and the, and the Lanchias, and then trying to scoop up any kind of misfortune that happens up, up the front. Alright, so we'll come around. i got to request my pit stop. got to remember to do that in our factor, too. come through the parabolica and then head towards the pits. Down to second gear, just use the engine braking and not over rev the car because that is the number one way that you can blow the engine in this thing. I don't really want to get over 7,000 RPM. That's, that's really my main goal. Although I can't go a little higher than that. The car doesn't actually make that much power up there, so it's, it's not even really that useful to rev it that high. All right, come in. There's no spit, uh, speed limit in the pits, but you do tr want to try to hit your box as, as good as possible. <laughs> I know, the wheel, so this is my, yeah, my wooden steering rim, and uh, it barely fits <laughs> in my webcam because of where my webcam is. It barely fits, but you can just see it. <laughs> Maybe I can turn this up just a little bit. All right, so we got four minutes until the uh, until the qualifying session starts. Now, let me, let me turn this down a little bit while we're in here. Hope the audio sounded good and everything while we were driving around. Um, uh, yeah, so qualifying for this. So we got an hour, which is a long time. It's a very long time to drive <laughs> just for, for qualifying. So we'll probably go out and try to get a banker lap. I, I would love to get into the 247s with this car. Um, I know I've done it before, so I know it can be done. And uh, if I can get a slipstream or something, maybe maybe I could actually do a lot better than that. But you can see here in the in the results right now, it's the three Lanchias up front, then the two Jags. I think we have a third Jag, which will be joining us, Nico, down there. And then, uh, yeah, it looks like the Ferraris are after that. Mantas and Larry, then the Cunninghams. So it'll be interesting. I don't know. I don't know what to expect for this, but hopefully, hopefully, some good racing. Yeah, the quality for I think it's a. I think it's a one hour session, so we get to go do as many laps as we want in one hour. Um, I'm sure there'll be folks trying to team up and do slipstreams. I haven't worked out anything. This track itself is right on the Steam Workshop, if you search for it. If you see the name right up here in the top left, Brianza, that's what they called it. But you should be able to find it right in the Steam Workshop. Hello. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. I hope you have a good race as well. You, you seem like you're going to be right up at the pointy end. <laughs> bump drafting. Yeah, I don't know if I'll do any bump drafting. But we'll see what kind of lap I can get. As long as I can get <clears throat> kind of where I am in that 6th to 10th range on the grid, I'll be happy because... Uh, as long as I'm in front of the, sl you know, the much slower traffic with the uh, with the lesser horsepowered cars, 
Um, I don't think I don't think a pole position is necessarily going to mean so much here today, <laughs> but you never know. I don't know if I'm going to use gloves today or not. The wheel's kind of slick with them. Doesn't the like varnish surface of the wheel and the gloves doesn't really grip too much. So Let's see. You'll see a lot of, if you were here last fall when, when we did the HRRC, you'll see a lot of familiar names today. It's a lot of the same people that race in this, um, which is, it makes it really fun to come back to because it kind of feels like you're coming back to, you know, a group that you know. <laughs> it's a lot of the same folks here. Should be starting the qualifying here in a minute. With an hour session, we shouldn't have to do anything too wild to uh, to get a clean lap. Yeah, there's a chicane version. There's a chicane version for R Factor 2 as well. Um, and we'll be racing on that with the 1,000 kilometer race in a, in a few weeks. That's the plan anyway. And so... It's, uh, I guess, right for the period, though. No chicanes in, in the 50s. Pretty hot track. We'll have to see. Put a little less fuel in the car, and then we'll we'll see uh, what kind of time I can get out of it. But again, I think if I can get into the 247s, I'll be pretty happy. If I get a slipstream, there's a chance to do quite a lot better of a time than that. Alright, we should be transitioning into the qualifying here in a second. I think we'll have just over 20 cars today. There we go. You can hear it changing sessions here. Alright. Here we are, time of day, swap. Yeah, I'm hoping for a fun race too. Alright, we got one hour to qualify now. <clears throat> so I'll load my setup. So I actually went... I went asymmetrical with my setup. I'll give away all the secrets here. Um, because you only turn left on a couple of corners on the track, and arguably the corners that you do turn left are are pretty gentle as far as corners go. They're not... I'm going to put like 20, 20 gallons in and do some laps. Um, the left-handers, I mean, it's Ascari and uh, whatever the turn after Curva Grande is. I know you guys will know it. Um, those are the only corners you're going left in, so I did... I did set up an asymmetrical setup, so it's almost like oval racing in the U.S., but the, the other way, <laughs> it was really difficult to wrap my brain around for some reason, making making everything uh, cambered the other way and all of that, but uh, it's not super, super different. You'll see, like, it's only the rear springs that are a little bit different, and I went pretty stiff on the front. I had a tough time with the uh, with the car rolling a lot, so I'm, I'm like, full stiff on the front anti-roll bars and stuff. Um, but yeah, dampers and everything are, are kind of asymmetrical to try to try to get it to behave on the oval and just be a little easier to go through right-handers since like Curva Grande, Parabolica, uh, the Lesmos, and obviously the oval. The oval's easy no matter what, but um, those are all, all corners that you want to be gentle on. Do I feel a difference with fuel load? Absolutely. Absolutely I do. Um, there's a lot of people in the pits. Why... Why isn't anybody left? Um, yeah, heavy fuel makes it a lot more difficult to... Uh... Oh, qualifying's private? Well, maybe it wasn't supposed to be set to solo. Well, that'll make things interesting. wonder if they'll restart it. Well, that'll make things really different with the... Uh... Oh, they're going to restart it. Um... 
yeah, we'll see. I think they're going to restart the server so that we'll actually qualify in a group <laughs> rather than solo. Although, solo qualifying would make things a little more even. Yeah, I've with these things, um, Paulo. With these things, I, I tend to try to play it nice and safe. Like a lot of folks are talking about the start and trying to get as best a jump as possible. And like, I think it's such a decently long race, and it's tricky enough that a start isn't necessarily going to make or break, you know, everything. So, all right, connection lost. So we'll see if they're able to fix the server. And, uh, and then we'll be doing group qualifying. Yeah, we're racing out. Mons at 10K today. Um, the full oval layout. We're going to be doing 500 kilometer race, which is 10, uh, 50 laps. So the Monza, they call it the 10K circuit because it is exactly 10K a lap. So it's really easy to calculate how many laps you need to do if you want to do a specific distance. Um, the 1,000 is 100 laps. Yeah, I'm the same Rujatsu. Just don't want to blow the engine right off the start. That would be so silly. All right, we're just waiting for the server to come back, and uh, and then we should be able to start qualifying, I think. Nico, good luck to you as well. I'm not sure I'll see you very much. I think you guys will uh you guys will be way out front today, but hopefully hopefully I can make something happen. Alright, while I'm in here I'll fix my pedal cam. It looks weird. While we're waiting. Makes my feet look blue. There we go. A little more natural. All right, just waiting, waiting for the server to come back. Oh my God, I just got raided on YouTube, which I don't think has ever happened. Thank you, Air Rec Gaming. I didn't even know you could do that. But hello, everybody <laughs> over there. Glad you like it, Don. I just a lot of fun. There's so much fun stuff out there to drive. So happy to share. Happy to share some of it. Well, thanks for for sending folks over here. I've never had never had a raid on on YouTube. I think it's pretty new. You can do that on YouTube. Yeah, I should have plenty of gear in the car. I'm on the high, I'm actually on the highest ratios uh, that the car has. So I found even bringing it down one set of one set of gears, the uh, top speed and everything didn't improve. So there's really no reason. <laughs> I think I'm. I think generally the car is just aero limited, which means the slipstream could help quite a lot. But you have to be pretty close. You got to be within like a second of the car in front, and so staying within a second of of the Lancias or the Jags is quite tricky. There's just a lot, a lot of straights on this track, so. All right, where is the server? Should be coming back here in a second, I'd imagine. Yeah, I mean, it always was big too, though. It's very realistic that the slipstream around Monza is a uh, stuff of of legends.
Uh, it's fairly new to raid, folks. Yeah, I, uh, I should look at that. Cause, but the thing is, uh, on YouTube, there's almost never, never anybody I know live. So I don't know who I would send people to when I uh, when I wrap up. All right, servers going up. All right, let me do this. I'm gonna just jump here for just a second. I don't want to spoil the server if it's public or something. There it is. All right. Back to it. All right, so it should jump straight into quali, I think. Yeah, qualifying. We got 50 minutes. Okay, so they kept it on the same schedule. So we all just kind of lost 10 minutes, but I guess that happens. Uh-oh. It's reloading something. There it is. Thank you. <laughs> all right. All right, everybody's jumping in. Let me load my setup again and uh, set the fuel. And we'll get out there, just try to hammer as many laps as I can. And hopefully get a good good time. We got 50 minutes though, which is still a good amount of time, so I'm not too worried about it. All right. Seems like pretty much everybody's here now. then. I think I got Frank right behind me. One of the Lanchias. Alright. Alright. Out onto the circuit. We'll come around the oval and we'll actually get the, the first time lap. So I'm just gonna try try to do my best to set a good good pace and uh, at least get in front of the slower class cars and everything. And then if we've got some extra time, we can we can really try to push and go for a good lap. But mostly about just getting a good solid time going. Get a little slipstream here off Mark. I think that's a Porsche, a little Porsche spider. <laughs> the cars in this mod are semi-realistic. The physics are modeled off the real cars. They don't quite all look like the real car. Although I think I think Wuchu and, and team have done a great job at uh, updating a lot of the models to match even closer. All right, we'll come though down the front stretch. We've got two cars slipstreaming in front, and I think I might catch them coming into turn one. Hopefully, I can get by before the turn. Pass on the right, I have no idea. They might be quicker in some of these corners than, than we can go. So we'll have to see. But we'll come down to Curva Grande on the inside a little bit. Get it down one gear. Just float it on in. A little bit of oversteer on the exit. Hopefully it didn't hold up Riley too much there. Keep it in third, up to the Lesmos then. Heavy down the brakes, second gear. Very narrow on the track, it's not, not good. There's no rubber down right now, so the track's probably gonna get a lot faster as we go. And, uh, Eatons will probably set the fastest time right at the end of the session. So we might have to drive for the full hour, but we'll see. All right, here comes, here comes Frank up behind me. He's just gonna have a lot more speed. I'll let him go up the inside. This might actually be a good thing for me. We'll see here. If I can stay with him through the Parabolica, I might have a decent run around the oval. Now my car alone tops out at 165 miles an hour. Broke a little early there just to make sure I don't run into the back of him. He's locking up the right front. He's gonna send it wide. 
Not too bad, though. He's going to save that, I think. Up the banking a little bit for him. Who knows? If stuff like that happens during the race today, maybe I could actually eke out a couple of the top positions, but we'll see. <laughs> Everyone's pushing right now for qualifying and stuff anyway, so... All right, we'll come out of the oval. One car down low. It's going to make the exit a bit tricky here. Big hop there. We'll keep it, keep it on the high side. That's a really tough place to go side by side. We're able to get around Martin. All right, 45 minutes to go in qualifying. Right on the paint. Arc it down just a little bit so we don't scrub speed trying to stay off the wall on the exit. We'll get around Darren and the little Bristol, the mighty Bristol. Set my first lap, 249.1. So quite a lot of speed to go. I can go faster than that alone. But at least we got a lap in. Third gear into Curva Grande. Let the car settle, get on the throttles to help turn it. Sliding a little bit, you don't really want to slide. It's gonna just burn off some speed. <laughs> Go fast, turn right, exactly. lot of wheel spin. It's just all about controlling the wheel spin so the tires break loose. They just don't have a slip angle. So we got one car crashing up there. There's a couple of cars still not loaded. I'll have to go back to the pits at some point. <laughs> Lovely jubbly. Very uh, of the time type of saying. All right, I'm just going to run this tank out. Just going to do laps, run the tank dry, and uh, and then see where I'm at. Probably fill it up, come back out. Oh, I'm going to do what Frank did last lap. All right. That ruins this one. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> just trade off. You have to slow down so much. You have to slow down so much for the uh, for the tight corners. Got one another unloaded car. That's oh, good. There's over 25 people in here. I wasn't sure how many how many cars we'd have. The more, the merrier. I think with a race like this. A 50 lap race as well, that's so long. Definitely be some attrition at some point, so. Making sure we got enough cars in here to, uh, to have a decent race the full time through. And hopefully not be one of the attrition. All right, ride, ride the high line. All right, this lap, this lap was no good because I went off, but we'll try to get another lap here. Yeah, the yellow cars, it's so annoying, but it's how our factor 2 prevents stutters as you're driving. It'll load a temporary car, and then once we exit the car, it'll it'll load them back. But for the time being, we get the uh, the yellow cars. All right, we'll come down to Curva Grande then. A little bit of wheel slip in the middle but decently on the power on the exit. Yeah, the Parabolica is, is a very tricky corner in these cars. I love it. I think it's such a perfect corner for older older style race cars as I really slide the car on the brakes there. Able to hold onto it though. Try to get the power down in between the Lesmos. Do a little left foot braking into the second Lesmo.
All right, got a better exit there out of Lesmo 2. Oh, is there a button? I don't have it mapped, unless it's a default button. Got another unloaded car that I'll get a little slipstream off of here. <laughs> Wonder if he'll let me buy. I don't know what kind of car it is. It's a two liter category, so. A little bit slower than us. All right, get it slowed down. Sliding still into the Parabolica. That was a really bad entrance. Just trying to work the throttle on coming out, get it up to third gear, a little bit of slip there. All right, pedal down, I'm up on my best time somehow. McGregor coming out of the pits there. Just gotta watch the bump. It's right here. <laughs> just gotta be really careful of that. It's, it can send you into the wall if you're if you got the the car kind of loaded the wrong way. Oh my gosh! Everybody always loves the yellow cars. All right, I'm about a quarter of a second up on my best laps. This one will better my best. Maybe into the 48s. Right against the fence. All right, once the yellow line up top ends, just kind of fade down and join the yellow line on the bottom. There we go, onto the front stretch. About three tenths up on my best lap, there we go. 48.8. So currently sitting, I think, seventh overall, seventh in class. Let's see if I can improve on it. Right back at it. Oh, just understeering. Wasn't able. I just got on the power too early there. It's my fault. Wasn't patient enough. That's yeah, going to eat up a lot of time there. The slide. Two and a half tenths down. My best lap ever in this car at this circuit is about a second faster than I've gone. So I'd be, I'd be ecstatic if I can get back into the 247s without a slipstream. slightly earlier this time for the Parabolica and try not to make such a mess out of it. There's a lot of time to be found just in the acceleration zones. Just wait for the car to rotate there. Get on the throttle a little bit. All right, walk it on. All right, wasn't the best exit. I love this at Vintage Monza when you can, when you get the cars that are on the oval or vice versa down the front stretch. It's very, very cool. Catching up to decline in front of us. Should go to the low side. I can jump up high. Just swing around the outside. Good luck to you as well, Jackson. I know the you make it to the end in that thing you're uh, you're doing a great job all right it's a little bit slower on this lap but there's a few corners I can clean up
There we go. A little bit later on the throttle, but it just really helps the exit. Catching up to Riley, but maybe get through the Lesmos before I actually catch him. Oh, he's out, out wide. Oh my god! Dear god. What happened there? Oh my god. And like a, uh... And like a true 50s racing driver, just keep your foot in it. I lost a little bit of time there, but could you blame me? Can you can you blame me for losing a little bit of time in that in that couple of corners? the throttle coming out. Ah, slipping the clutch. Dang it. Alright. That'll, uh... That'll ruin this lap. If you get on the throttle just a little bit too early after a shift, you'll slip the clutch. And, uh, totally ruins your acceleration. That won't be the only time I do that today. But, gotta try to prevent it as much as possible. It's the easiest way to over-rev the cars, too, because you're basically in neutral while it tries to grab the clutch. Alright, we've got about five laps of fuel in. Theoretically, this is when this car should be the fastest, so we're just going to keep trying to hammer the laps out. See if I can uh, see if I can improve on my 248.8. I should be able to. I know I can do faster than that. And a lot of unloaded cars. It'll be good to go back into the pits in a second. Got a lot of a lot of unloaded cars here. All right, start another lap. Fastest lap right now is a 245.3. Whoa! I do be down on a little bit of pace. That's for sure. A little hot into Curva Grande. That's right, I, can, I could give it a little bit of extra throttle to get it to rotate more. That's a tricky, tricky thing to do though. Oh, I locked up the rear diff. That's what happens when you don't rev match well on a downshift. broke the right the left front suspension yeah this is qualifying so we got 30 minutes left in qualifying and uh i've gotten a banker in so we're not going to be at the uh, back of the pack but Ugh, so loud so loud outside the car let's take a quick peek here though nico's up front 245.3 in the jag wow jag lancia jag lancia jag lancia that's pretty cool. Then the two Ferraris. I'm just in front of Manta so far. Oh, only less than a tenth. Less than a tenth in front. That's pretty impressive. All right. So we'll go back out. We're going to just start with the same fuel, I think, and uh, just try to do some more laps. Why not? <laughs> yeah, that was a little bit of a bonk. It's okay. We're in qualifying. It's okay to push right now. All right. Thank you, Ascari. Appreciate the uh, good luck wish. I know, it's been like major nostalgia for me to drive these cars again, just, we did so much last fall with it. 
All right, I got a clear track behind me. I'll jump on the high side of Toby here. Haven't seen Toby in a while, about a year. All right, we'll come out of turn two. All right, so we get right into a lap. That's one thing I love about Monza and, and doing some laps. This version of Monza is just get the nice run up to the start line and then you, you start a timed lap immediately, so. Oh yeah, I'm definitely, I'm definitely gonna check out the new Ferrari movie. I don't know too much about it yet other than it's Adam Driver and it's focused around the Millimilia and everything, but excited to see it when it comes out. All right, we'll get onto the front stretch. Got decline in front of me, but I should be able to get him before Curva Grande. We'll see. Yeah, no problem. Get a little slipstream help down the front stretch. 164. Let's be a little bit up on top speed then. We'll go to the inside. I can stay outside, I guess. Just make intentions clear. All right, come down to turn one, Curva Grande. Just don't overdo it. Get down into third gear, let it roll in. Got kind of pinched quite a bit there. A little extra throttle at the apex just to get it to rotate. That might be the way. All right, into the Lesmos then. Just, just nibble that curve on the inside. I don't really want to do that. Eats up a little bit of my time there through the Lesmos. Yeah, these cars really mess with your head. If you've driven anything more modern, they just drive better in every single way. So you have to kind of unlearn all those habits of using brakes, using tires, using your steering wheel. Right, I'm a tenth up so far. We'll see if I can get through the Parabolica here. hot, but all right, get on the throttle. Come on. Oh, how many times am I going to do that? It's going to kill my speed around the entire oval. I can just see the time slipping away. It's all right. Plenty of time to go. Yeah, I think Adam Driver will be great. Like, look, I, I'm not, uh, I know a lot of people have, they get really worked up over movies and stuff. I mean, it's just entertainment. It's not going to be a documentary. Uh, if it's, if it's fun to watch, that's really what, what you could ask for. So, hopefully it's a, it's just like an enjoyable movie. Right against the fence. I'm actually up on my time despite the, the missed gear coming on to the oval. So if I can do the rest of the lap the same way and, and nail the Parabolica, I could gain quite a bit of time, I think. I'm catching into Robin here in front in the Cunningham. Yeah, I have been driving too many modern cars in WRC. Those modern, those modern Group B cars. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be held up a little bit here, but that happens. I've been lucky so far with my laps and not getting held up too much. Although I don't think I really got held up that much. I was just a little slow there. Fade to the left side up the inside of, of Robin here. Down a gear, down a second. Robin's looking on the inside. Another one. Ah, I'm just being a little too quick with my gear changes. I have to give it that extra slight, like quarter of a second pause or one tenth. Yeah, I found 
So my fuel, I've got about, I've got about 10 laps when I start. I found on very, very low fuel, the car doesn't actually handle as nicely. So that's why I've got a little bit more fuel than the bare minimum. Start to slide it just a little bit there. There we go, finally hit the gear coming out. This lap's gonna end up probably being better than my last, just because of that. Oops, somebody in front just disappeared. All right, we got 24 minutes left in qualifying. I would love to, I would love to pick up a few more tenths at least just get closer to what I think my true speed is. Yeah, Nate, this is one of my, and for everybody watching, this is one of my favorite mods and, and cars in all of sim racing. And I don't say that lightly. The 55 mod for R Factor 2 are some of the best driving classic cars out there. They're just so good. And, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to race them against a bunch of competent folks, because I'll tell you, these are hard to drive. The fact that we've got a bunch of people circling around out here and, and doing a great job is we'll be able to three wide across the line. Uh, I've got a ton of speed, but it's just just short on my lap time there. But we'll have a, a huge head of steam coming down to Curva Grande. Just at the 100 marker there, jump on the brakes, down a gear, chuck it in. There's just a beauty to driving these cars well, and although they're my favorite, you've got to be in the right mood for it, because they, they're they so tricky to drive. Come on now. All over the place coming into the Lesmos there. Decently through the Lesmos, but not not perfect. But I'm about right on my pace for, for my best lap so far. If I could do a good parabolica here, it could really, really improve my lap time. Coming around, I got Riley in front, but I should be able to get through parabolica before we, we catch him. Just past the 300 boards here get down into third gear as quick as possible. Then I try to get to second before the 100 marker. So Riley's gonna spin off in front. It's okay, we've all done it. Oh, I got a little bit of a slide in it. Yeah, it's gonna really ruin the apex speed there. All right, I was able to get up into third, but I lost a couple tenths with that slide. Time's gonna be probably right about the same as my best lap so far. Your car's going underneath the oval there. How's the audio sound? Should I make the car louder or quieter compared to my voice? Pick up a little substream here on uh, Tom, maybe just slightly. You gotta be about a second behind to actually get a slipstream, so it's it's really not this massive, massive thing passing cars like that. Ah, I'm gonna be three hundredths off my best lap. Okay, sounds good. I'll take that. Nothing worse than watching back a stream and the audio is bad. <laughs> a little bit of slip there coming out of Parabolica. Of 
or Parabolica, Curva Grande. Italian corner name, man. That'll look cool. Definitely not quick though. Now say that I'm a tenth and a half up, so who knows? Slap. If I can get around the oval, fine. It'll be a bit quicker. I'm gaining a whole bunch up two tenths. Up three tenths now. Just try to do a nice smooth run around the oval. Might get a little bit of a slipstream from this car in front. Try to ride that line. Hump. There we go. Right. This might actually work out really nice with David here in front down the back stretch. Ooh, he's gonna go way to the inside. I'm gonna chase him because I want the I want the little bit of speed he could possibly give me. Yeah, gaining. This is gonna give me about a half a tenth. And then I'll I'll have that top speed then through the second part of the oval, right to the fence there, almost hit it. Alright, this is gonna be my best lap yet. Just because of that little extra slipstream, I got the shifts correct. Really wasn't the best lap. I'll take it about a half second up. You can see Nico there on the oval, I think. All right. 248.3. Keeps me in seventh position, but I feel a lot better about that time. I'll just keep at it. Got 18 minutes to go. A little hot coming into Curva Grande. slip in it just to try to get around the corner without crashing all right slap's not gonna be that great so we'll just get around the track here Yeah, I'd love a 247. That's that's the best time I've done. So it'd be great to match it in qualifying. I'm also considering though, I've got to drive for like almost three hours here in a minute. So it would be nice to take a quick break before then. I don't think there's any break necessarily between the qualifying and the race. Ah, throw the car off the parabolica there. All right, we'll jump into the pit lane here. All right, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come in the pits here and, uh, and just practice this pit stop real quick. And then I'm gonna take a quick break for a second, get some water and stretch and then It'll come back and try to set a time right at the end of qualifying. The track will be the most rubbered up and everything. And we'll see if, uh, I don't know, we'll see if, if I can improve at all. But so far, so good. I mean, I'm pretty happy with my pace so far. I think it'll get me in a good spot for the, uh, for the race. But would love to improve it. All right, so I'm going to jump away for just a minute. And then I'll be back. What are we doing? All right, I'll be back in a sec.
minutes. All right. Get things set back up here. Go out. We got 13 minutes to go, so enough time for a few laps. Got enough time for a few laps here to uh, try to get maybe a slightly better time. But to be honest, let's look at the uh, we'll look here at the the starting grid as it stands right now. Gosh, the cars are so loud. As it stands right now, I am the fastest Ferrari. I'm the fastest of the rest <laughs> at this time. Uh, quite a few tenths ahead of Mantas, but at any point they could improve. But in front of the rest of the pack, so hopefully, hopefully that bodes well for the race. But uh, let's let's take a couple gallons out. We'll go out, just try it for fun. We'll try to set a better lap. Who knows? Maybe maybe I could actually do one. Appreciate everybody tuning in today. Great crowd in here for, for something kind of a one-off like this. I think I do have my lights mapped just in case we need them, but I know I'd, lo I'd love to get the 247, but I, I just don't know. I the only reason I got the low 248s at the slipstream, so I think the track might not be as gripped up right now as it was in the in the practice session, so. Let Toby have his entry to uh, the oval here without having to worry about me. Though we'll quickly pass him back again. Where am I in the whole single and triple screen debate? I didn't know there was a debate. I run a single screen. But if people like triple screens, run a triple screen. Well, welcome, Duzon. You enjoy. I hope I got your name right too. <laughs> All right, come around and uh, start a lap. See, see how I can do here. Got just just over ten minutes remaining in the session. All right, right out to the fence there. Catching up to David. I don't know if I'm going to get him before Curva Grande. It's going to be mighty close. So far, sitting seventh on the grid, which is right, at the, right behind all the cars that are a lot faster than this car. So I feel pretty good about it right now. And maybe we'll be able to pick up one or two of those spots from the guys up there if, uh, if any issues befall them during the race. The race should start right at the top of the hour, so we're only about 10 minutes away from the actual race, I believe. My car can only do about 165 miles an hour alone down the front straightaway after you do the oval perfectly. So I know the Jags can get up to 172. So I'm quite a bit down on top speed, and it just around a track like this, you just can't make up the speed anywhere. David's going to stick to the left side. That's good. He made himself very clear about what he was going to do there. There's no questions. What kind of watch do I have on? This is a uh, it's a Dan Henry. It's it's nothing too fancy, but it's a cool. I think it's a cool looking watch. It's not a. Uh, not a ridiculously expensive watch, but it's not like a cheap one either. Kind of looks like an old Rolex Daytona, which is <laughs> maybe why I like it. All right, coming to the front stretch. This lap's no good, but just getting the tires worked in, I guess. Irvine comes out of the pits there with a head of steam and the Jag. 
kind of missed the Jag. If you were here last fall when we did the HIRC, I drove the Jag for the entire season, and uh, it was awesome. Won the championship of my own series. Call it what you will. But I had a lot of fun doing it. No, I would not want a Rolex. That's too much. Just trying to get a good run here for the next lap. Put a little substream off Darren here coming to the line in his mighty Bristol. Wow, it's so cool seeing the cars fly by. Man, this is going to be a lot of fun in the race. Here comes everyone behind me with a massive head of steam. Look at the Jack go. Let's see if I can stick with him for the, for the road course part of the lap. I should technically be a little quicker through the corners than him, but there's just not enough corners. Really only the Lesmos and the Parabolica where I could gain time. If I could be close to him coming onto the oval, you never know. You never know what could happen with this lap. And although it wouldn't be a true 247 on my own merit, I'll take it. Oh, he slides wide. All right. Never mind then. <laughs> Get excited for nothing. Yeah, the bump, the one big bump on the oval, I'll call it out this time again. That is, it is definitely scary. It is the one place that you could really mess up. So this mod is on the Steam Workshop, um, an earlier version of it, which is still very, very, very good, the public version. It's the 1955 sports car mod, and uh, highly recommend it. This is a slightly customized version for, for the league specifically, so it's not going to be exactly this, but it's very close, and uh, it's a great mod. Oh uh, yeah, and the track is too. I don't know if you're asking about the cars or the track. Oh, I'm coming up to Reese. Reese, give me your slipstream, bud. I need it. I need it. He's racing a Lancia, and I could very much use that slipstream if he's going to be nice. But I think I'm going to be just slightly too far back, and I'm seven tenths down on my best lap, which is just going to be too much. We're coming up to the big bump, though, right after this tower, and you can see on the ground there's some some cracks, and it's right there. <laughs> it is a uh, it's a scary bump. Just slightly too far back from Reese here to get a good, a good slipstream. For those who don't know, Reese is self paw racer, and he has a YouTube channel and Twitch. I think he's probably streaming on Twitch right now, if I was to guess. I think I saw that he was today. So, if you want to watch his point of view as well, he's probably got a good shot to win this thing with the Lancia, so. All right, we're starting another lap. I got a little bit of traffic, but I think they're all the fast, fast cars. So let's see how this works out. Yeah, these three in front, what are they doing? Teaming up for some sort of crazy slipstream, I think. Let's see if I can join them. Nicely through Curva Grande there. Ervon again sliding through the Lesmos. I'm going to slide as well, but I've got to stay with this lap. This might be huge for me. Oh no! A little bit of a, a crash there in front. I got Nicholas behind me and another, another of the Lancias. He's actually going to have a pass so we come up to Ascari. We'll tuck in right behind him. The other red cars. It's still going to help me improve my time, though. 
But all really depends on how the parabolica here goes, if I can get a good exit. This is a great little little test for the race. I I just don't think, even with a slipstream, that I can't really stick with these guys. But that was a decent exit out of Parabolica. I'm under a second behind, but can I have enough? Come on. Come on, 375. Let's go. Get it up to fourth gear. I am slightly better than my best time, but very slightly. I've fallen down a couple positions in the ranking as well. Really close to the guardrail there on the entry to the oval. Little hop. Ah, just a little too far back to benefit from it. I think it's also helped because Nicholas has got the uh, the slipstream of the three in front of him. Uh, and I'm losing a whole bunch of time here through the second and third corners on the oval. Now, I think the Ferrari 375 was quite old at this point, 1956, so it really just wasn't as fast. But that was just so slightly slower than my best time. All right, we'll stay right on it, though. We've got one minute to go. This is my final lap of qualifying. Track has the most rubber on it, and I'm just out of slipstream range of a very fast group of cars in front. We'll try to try to do as good as I can here. Big lockup from one of the Jags in front, myself as well. I don't know how I saved that. Oh, all right, that's it for me. <laughs> That was a monster save, though. I'll take that. So it looks like I'm going to actually start back in ninth. I wonder if Montes was able to jump me. We'll come around to get the pits here. Whoa! My god. I hate when people do that. All right, we'll come around and get the pit box. So that's going to be it for me for qualifying. I'm, I'm a little bummed I wasn't able to improve there at the end. I just really bottled up the Lesmos. Seeing everyone slide in front just kind of messed me up. But that's what happens sometimes. We'll see what I can do from ninth on the grid, it looks like, if nobody else improves. Reese runs a little wide through the Parabolica. All right, we'll come get the pits. Just don't want to miss my pit box during the race. Like that. Oh, I'm going to slide wide. If you miss it by a lot, they uh, the time goes way up. So you need to be pretty precise. All right, give me one second here. Man, Montas gets the 246.7. Had to have a slipstream. I cannot imagine that time was without without a big big slipstream help. That's crazy though. Alright, we will load the big setup though. Alright, so this race is 50 laps. And even though it says 17 laps in the setup, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure we can make it 25, 26 laps on a tank of fuel. And so we are going to do that. And if it goes like my testing did, I only use a tiny bit of the tires, so I will not change tires on the pit stop. And, and we'll see if that 
alone can help make a difference. I think it's mainly going to be just trying to stay clean, staying on the track for 50 laps, doing what I can in the slipstream. It'll be hard to get away from the other cars of the same, you know, match the other Ferraris um, if, if you don't make a mistake. And so we'll have to see. We'll have to see how well how well I can do staying on the track and everything. But hoping for just a fun race. I, I really think the top group's out of out of reach. They're just so fast. But kind of racing for the seventh position. Racing the other guys in the in the Ferraris here. So these four. So we'll see. We'll see if I can keep up. And have a good race. A lot of other cars in the race too. Looks like Matias has got the pole in the 1500s. Martin Bear. It's got the pole in the uh, 2000s. Yukonari with the uh, 3000s and then 3000 pluses. It's going to be Nico Hillebrand up front. Up front with the Jag at the 244.2. Really fast. From Niklas, Kristen, Ervan, Frank, Kodrecki, and Austin Birchfield in the top five. Reese is going to start in sixth. Montas in the seventh in the, in the uh, Ferraris like me. Peter right in front in eighth. And then myself in ninth position. Yeah, it's on uh, on the Steam Workshop. If you look for the 1955 mod, um, it'll be pretty much the same thing we're racing here today. This one's slightly slightly different, just to represent the 56 season for this for this league. Um, but yeah, all right. I think it's loading into the race session. There we go. Oh, it's warm up. Oh, we have five minutes. Five minutes before the race. All right, I'm going to, just because it's going to be such a long race, I'll quickly take a break for these five minutes. And then uh, we'll be back for the race. Let me uh let me jump out in the car just with the fuel. Love the sound. It's a like glitchy. Now, one of the things I got to be really careful about during this is the actual start and not blowing my engine. Um, it is quite easy to over rev. And so my plan is to just really take it easy because um, it's really not worth. Nah, that was bad. It's really not worth risking blowing the engine. I'm sorry, I did over rev slightly there, so I want to make sure I don't do that. Do one more practice start on the back stretch here. And 
two minutes before the race. Should be a lot of fun. I'd be happy with something like that. I would be fine, fine with that. My God, it's really, really frightening. Alright, so the race today, if you're just tuning in now, 50 lap race around Monza Historic in the 56, 55, 56 cars. I'm driving the Ferrari 375 and it's, it's down a little bit on power compared to the Jags and the Lancias that are up front. So we'll see what happens with those guys. I don't think we're going to be able to stick with them. So it's mostly a race between the other Ferraris and of course all the other cars that are out there. We've got some slower cars as well. This is the HSO League, uh, Historic Sim Racing Online League. And I put the, the link to their website in the description. So if you're looking for some folks to race with, they do, uh, they do lots of different leagues. This is just one. But hopefully, uh, hopefully it's a good race today. It's a long race. It's going to be over two hours. And uh, survival is, is first and foremost. So hopefully the start here is, is clean-ish. <laughs> And, uh, and we're able to just get into a groove, feel things out, and see how the car is doing. I'm going to try to make it 26 laps for the pit stop, fill it up with fuel, and then go to the end. That's the plan. And anything else from that, we'll just take it as it comes. How's the suspension set up? So I did set up the car asymmetrically, so it is, it is kind of set up to turn right, because uh, most of the corners on this track are right-handers. Uh, but it honestly doesn't make a massive difference uh, on cars like this, just because they are so spongy and stuff to begin with. So um, for the oval itself, you do need fairly stiff springs. I've got pretty stiff in the front end. All right. We are getting ready for the race then. All right, let's get it on the grid. Let's make sure my setup's loaded. Load. We've got 17 laps of fuel. Should be 25, 25 laps. We are set to go. Get it in first gear, make sure we don't roll away or anything. I'm on the outside, which I don't hate. I've only got a couple cars behind me that might have enough speed to jump, jump us, so we'll have to see. All right, thanks for tuning in, everybody. I hope it's a nice long race today. We can have some good slipstream battles, and uh, I don't know, just enjoy the mod, enjoy, enjoy the league. And see see what it brings. Hopefully, it's a nice, fun, clean race for the folks up front too. And uh, there's not some massive chaos here in the early going, but we we will see. We will see how it goes today. Thanks for tuning in, though. down a little bit off the start there. It's all right. Everybody's really packed up close. Come on, guys, sort it out. All right, we're behind one of the Lancias. I'm kind of boxed in here. What is going on? It's a Frank in front of me. He's struggling with the gears or something. Really, really bad start. Come down into Curva Grande, though. It's nice and easy. We've got one car. Jumping up the insides, Jackson. I lost out so much there. I don't know what happened to Frank, but I really had nowhere to go. All right, through the first corner at least. Head down to the Lesmos. Maybe some fireworks down here. Down a second gear, just roll it in. Just keep an eye on my mirror too. We don't have somebody come spearing up the inside. 
we got a Cunningham right in front of me, and I should be able to easily out-drag him down the straight. Jackson is one heck of a driver. He races MX-5s in real life, and I've had the pleasure of racing with him quite a bit. But the car today is just not going to have it, unfortunately, around here. All right. Get it through Ascari now. Need to try to have a good parabolica here to make sure I stay with this pack in front. Got Gregor, I think, in one of the Ferraris in front, the white one. There's one white Ferrari. Breaking a bit early here for the first lap down to the parabolica. Remember, we're on full fuel now, too, so it's a bit different than it was in qualifying. Jackson's out accelerating me, but I'll get him on top speed in a second. All right, we'll come by to jump onto the oval for the first time. Ah, all right. I think we've made it through the first lap. Jackson's actually going to have some speed just because of the slipstream, I think. Interesting. Right up to the fence there. Get it onto the back stretch. All right, I'm gaining on Gregor in front here. Wow, if Jackson can stick with me, I'm actually going to pull him along quite well. Up on top speed, just because of this slipstream. A little sketchy coming out of the corner. That's the second Cunningham, the Ferrari Cunningham. We'll get around both of them. Complete lap number one. All right. So, 49 laps to go. You can see the lap count in the top right. It says two right now, so I don't know if we'll know what lap the leader's on if we get lapped at some point, but we can figure it out, I think. It's a little high on the old revs there. I hope I didn't go over 7,000. <laughs> Ooh, I think the car behind me knocked into the wall. It's Gregor. Okay. So I got the all three, I think, of the other Ferraris in front of me here. I know the two red cars are the Ferraris. It's Montas and Peter having a slipstream. I'm, I'm just a little too far back on them to actually get that. So we'll see if I can get through Parabolica all right. A really miserable start. I was stuck up behind one of the launches. That uh, it just didn't accelerate off the line. I think I can safely rev up to 7,300 RPM without blowing the engine or risking blowing it um, if the racing gods are with me today. But I've kind of set a, hard, uh, a cap for myself at 7,000 because the, the rev range peaks at about 68. So it doesn't really make any sense to go higher anyway. These guys in front, side by side, that'll help me a little bit, but I don't think I'm close enough to get any of the slipstream from them. sitting in 10th position right now, so one worse than I qualified, 10th overall, 10th in class. So 249.5, the second lap. 
All right, this lap's going to be important for me to uh, stay with this group. Gained quite a bit there into the Lesmos. Come on. I've gained in a little bit, but on the straights, they're going to be pulling on me just because of that slipstream. I think that's Montas really out wide there. seconds off. Come on. <laughs> Sticking right with him. Without the slipstream, which is a good sign, so if I can get up to him, I might have something to, to dice it up. We're still very early on, though, so we're going to catch up to traffic at some point. That'll make things interesting. About two tenths closer this lap than I was last lap is it enough for me to get the draft. I'm slightly faster than I think I would be normally. Oh, I think we have our first DNF, David. It's one one of the slower cars, I believe, out of the race. I got some of the slower portions on the right there. It's so awesome. It's so much fun racing these kind of cars online with folks. A bunch of like, look how many how many cars are in this race and how clean it was off the start there. I mean, it is tough to find a group of folks that can do that. We're coming to Curva Grande, I'm really closing up on these guys. They're they're holding each other up a bit. Now this is my race here. This little pack, oh, as one of them lights it up. I think that's Mantas up the inside. These three, these three are my race today. So just play it nice and easy now. Now that we caught up, we don't need to do anything dramatic. We've got plenty of laps to go. we got a pit stop still. we got traffic to come. I catch up to him and I miss a gear. <laughs> it's going to kill me on the street here. It's all right. It's all right. Just see the Jags going through the Parabolica as we rounded Ascari. So, yeah, it's just not, not possible to stick with them, unfortunately, today. One exit from the Lesmos killed me. The higher you go on the oval, the faster you go. And uh, in qualifying, I was above the yellow line. I just don't want to risk damaging this, the bodywork on the fence. You do kind of bounce off of it, so it doesn't suck you in, but 
definitely damage the car when you uh, hit the hit the guardrails there. Top speed will be down. I need all the top speed I can get today. They pulled out quite a bit on me. They're fighting with each other once again. It's going to help me. I need to get up to them and actually stay there, not miss a gear. No, I don't have a Husingveld H pattern. I've got the Thrustmaster H pattern. Uh, I have a handbrake from them and a uh, sequential shifter from them along with the pedals. So I, I do use their shifter sometimes, but as far as I know, as well as all of you guys, there is no Husingveld H pattern that I've ever seen. All right, decent through the Lesmos that time, but it's still I'm a little far back here. I really need to just get, get through this little gap I have. Hear the cars running by on the oval. That's so cool. It definitely will not get old for me. These two little Porsches are having a nice all-out battle amongst themselves today. We'll see them soon. Bet it's only a couple of laps till we lap them. Oh, I'm losing time to this group in front. I really messed up. I was so close to him, that one that one Lesmos, and then because I missed a gear, I just wasn't able to latch onto the slipstream then. Still early going. We're only five laps into the race. 50 laps today. We'll get another DNF. Jim is out of the race. Yeah, I'm hoping their their slipstreaming and battling will help me out here, but I'm I'm fast losing them. I think I'm down a second this last lap, just just because of the slipstream. I think I pull them in a little bit here, but it's not enough to get back into the slipstream range. too hot here into the first Lesmos. Slide it a little bit there. Come on. Yeah, it's tough to feel like you're like this is it or if I if I lose them, I'm never getting them back. But there's still a lot of race to go. I gotta remember that. I gotta do everything I can to not fall off the track myself and then see, see just how it works out. Just do just do as fast of laps as I can. That's all I can do. I 
I mean, a little bit of it's the rubber band effect, of course. It feels like you pull them in, but I'm watching the relative. I'm about the same distance as I was last lap at this point, so I'm really not... I'm really not losing much time to them without the slipstream, which means I feel like if I get up to them, I could, I could actually mix it up pretty well. Yeah, the idea would be to make it another 20 laps on fuel and uh, and then pit just once during this race, right, right in the middle. So we'll see. We'll see if I can do it. As long as I make it to lap 25, we should be good. It's the one nice thing with a, uh, a laps race versus a timed one is that, you know, the fuel, you don't have to worry about there being an extra lap or something. You know exactly how many laps you have to do. Yeah, I shouldn't have to worry about the fuel at all. So that's that's the idea. I'm like two tenths closer right now than I was last lap. I'm just gonna keep doing it. Doing 249 flats, and I, I can tell I don't have any slipstream because I'm topping out at 165, which is this car's kind of natural top speed. Throttle there. There's a lot of understeer through the Lesmo 1. <laughs> Hear a car go by over the oval there. Could be any lap now that we're going to catch some of the slowest lap cars. And, uh, That'll make things a little more interesting. Just, it's like I'm pulling a rope. I'm just trying to pull the rope without over pulling it or snapping it. It's a good analogy. I'm trying to pull the rope without snapping it. I'm a slightly closer to this lap than I was last lap, but I think I'm about half a second away from getting the slipstream. You'll know, you'll feel it once you get it. It's crazy. Yeah, I feel like I'm losing most of my time out of the Lesmos. I don't know why that's happening. Yeah, I'm, I'm so close to it. If I can just keep doing this, I will get there. I am gaining on them. Maybe a tenth on that lap. Down to the 248s with the lap time, though. All right, here, here come the lap traffic. This could really make it easy or much harder. We'll have to see. They're all going to clear, clear Mark here in the first of the Porsches before the Lesmos, but oh no, Mark, careful, Mark. Slam on the brakes there just to make sure he wasn't going to come back across the track. Hopefully didn't lose too much time doing that, but I wasn't able to carry the speed like he should.
I got something better than DRS. This car creates lift at high speeds. Yeah, that was frightening. <laughs> I mean, Mark did a great job there keeping that under control because it's so. I was expecting to kind of have a tank slapper across the track. Going to slow down here. Got a whole other group of cars here. This could help me. Now, we were told in the driver briefing to pass the slower cars on the high side, but it's a little weird when you're on the straights. But yeah, it looks like, looks like Matias is gonna jump down low. I'll scoot around the high side on him. Really slow car on the inside. Isidoro in the Bristol is having some kind of issue. Isidoro won our, I believe he won both, or he won the Isle of Man time trial we did in that class. I think he was doing quite well at Targa Florio, but had some kind of mechanical. So I know he's quick in those cars. This is the uh, really, really small engine capacity ones. Uh, I'm about exactly where I was before we hit the traffic, and I have to think if, if I didn't have to avoid that, that car through the Lesmos, I could have been, been with him, but we'll keep pushing. A little bit of dust from the two in front. That'll help me. Montas had a little bit of an issue there. All right. Isidoro's out. All right, I am with Montas. I'm going to get the slipstream from him here. He's going to be right about at the point to get it from Lari in front. Oh, it feels so good to reel him in finally on the straight instead of, instead of just fall back. I think Peter up front's run a bit wide. Just keeps it on the track, though. You can see we all struggle to get the power down here. It's like the worst-case scenario for these cars, trying to turn and accelerate from a very slow speed. All right, I'm with him now. necessarily want to get into a crazy slipstream race with them but I do want to see if I can stay in front I haven't had any any practice with that yet these two go side by side in front here comes Montes up the inside oh Montes jumped out of it too We're on lap 10, so getting close to halfway for fuel. It's going to be very busy racing around other cars like this, so I just need to try to do my laps. I know I've got a good pace, so I just need to do my laps and try to avoid any, any sort of incident.
contest right behind me. Oh, he's going to jump up the inside. I wonder if he, I wonder if I spooked him on the brakes. It's good. I, good thing I looked. It does. It is a little scary being the last one, just because you don't want to lose, you know, the slipstream, but. This is good. It's a good little battle. See how it all works out over the course of the race. Long ways to go yet. We're just just a fifth of the way into this thing. Get a little squirrely on the brakes there. Car kind of wiggles like a noodle as it slows down. Oh, I slid it. Don't do that. Antas did the same thing. Okay, I'm really not that worried about losing a position, but it's just about staying with these guys and making sure that uh, nobody nobody pulls away from us, or that I don't get left behind again. <laughs> a little further than I'd want to be back, but these guys are also racing a lot closer than I would be comfortable with, to be honest. Yeah, it's exactly it, Paolo. I'm, I'm waiting kind of till the, the stint. Oh, come on, Larry. Larry slowed down a lot there. Yeah, I'm really waiting for the stint to, to be done. Second half of the race, that's really where the, the overtakes will happen. Just be careful here. Just, Take it easy, crank up the throttle just a little bit. I'm not gonna lose him being a tenth behind. Wow, oh, they're very, it's, you gotta watch out for the bunch up. It's something to be aware of, I guess. I hope that our internet's good enough that we don't, <laughs> we don't bounce off each other unexpectedly. Larry's falling behind me. And I got Peter and Montes in front. Yeah, 10K race would be 100 laps. The lap itself, or sorry, uh, yeah, the 1,000 kilometer race would be 100 laps. It's a 10, 10K per lap layout of the track. It's pretty cool this is exactly that long. But we're doing 50 laps here today, so it's a 500. As Montas got out a little wide through a scary there, I'll come up the outside, I guess. I'm able to make the pass around the outside. He broke maybe a little bit earlier. Just try to massage that throttle pedal on. All right, up to second of the pack. I really think we're racing for seventh today, unless anything happens up front. Seems like so far so good with the guys up there. Just sit in here behind Peter. This is good, I'm learning some stuff because the end of the race is gonna be pretty cutthroat here on the oval. Oof, a little bit sideways there. And so I need a better run than that to make a pass. So it's good, just put that in the memory bank. 
So we might need to know that later. Although, might be able to get him back here before the line. It's worth trying just to, to test this stuff out. There goes Montes having a run. Man, it's it's tough to you gotta you gotta time it well. So I'm gonna slow down a little bit here. Coming to Curva Grande side by side. Uh, this is a great race so far. I really hope we can make it to the end like this. This would be so exciting with a lap or two to go. But we have a long way to go yet. The thing, though, is passing... Like, I could really try to pass these guys, but there's no way I'm getting away from them, you know? So it's it's not really worth the risk of doing any kind of crazy move. As I move to the inside here. Peter's able to hold the speed up the outside or the inside. Well, I guess it becomes the inside here. Just let the car do its thing. Try to regain control of it. Oh, this is going to be a tiring race if it's like this the whole time. if we can get into just a groove here and, and decide to run like this. It's the pack race now. It's going to get very, very tiring doing this for two hours. But I guess that's how races were here. If you watch old replays of races, they were just in a big pack the whole time. Once they inserted chicanes on this track, it changed a lot. Catching up to Steph here. One of the slower cars, although it is red. It is not one of the Ferraris or Lancias. A little bit of oversteer there coming out. We're going to save a lot of fuel doing this. Catching a string of slower cars now, which hopefully we just all play nice here. 
We should be able to pass him up the outside. The car swings way low. Gonna be a little nervous there. Oh my god, we don't need to do that. Definitely don't need to do that. <laughs> Poor, who is that, Riley? Probably scared him half to death. Interesting, Peter went to the inside there. I'm not sure why, necessarily. pack for once. Even if it is only for a couple corners, I have a feeling it won't last the rest of the lap. gonna drive my normal line if they want to jump and grab a position from me then that's on them now we're not doing the snake I think that's the one of one of the worst things that's been allowed in motorsport in a long time you pick a line you hold your line or you make one move all right, these two behind me are going side by side, and I'm I'm pulling out about a second. But they're going to have so much more speed slipstreaming that they'll catch me, even if they can't get my slipstream right away. But I don't know. We'll just we'll just try to go as fast as we can and see what happens. I will go back to the very top though and see if they have trouble following me. Get in the barrier. Right at the end of the paint, start carving down, grab the inside line for the exit. Perfect. Able to stay in front of them through the oval. Seven tenths up still. Let's see, let's see how the infield goes this time. The infield. <laughs> Listen to me. The, uh, the the road circuit. We got a yellow flag. The marshal there waving a yellow flag. I don't know what for. We should be a little vigilant. Oh, a car in the bushes. Looks like one of the Porsches. No fire, though. <laughs> Just be careful not to slide it into the corner. Or out. a little battle back there and if I can get really lucky here maybe I could pull away but if they sort it out and decide to work together instead of a fight then uh, it could be a very different story I got a little bit of lap traffic to contend with dispatch this first Porsche before the Parabolica 
just gotta be careful. Like some of these cars will be quicker in the middle of the corner just because they're a lot lighter. So it can get really awkward. We had some of that with the HRRC season. A little bit of slip coming out of Parabolica, but we're all right. All right, they're all gonna jump down low. Let's just hope we don't see some two by twos up here or else this will get really awkward. Hop here. Ah, I think they got held up. How am I breaking away from them? All right, just keep focused. Now, we're pretty deep in the HSO season. This is just kind of a one-off for me. Maybe I'll do more, though, if you guys like it. If you, wanna, if you want more of this, maybe I'll do some more. Let's have to see what the tracks are coming up. All right, ride the line, ride the wall. Just don't get into it. I gotta start thinking about like fuel and stuff and make sure I'm on the good side of things. It says I can do another 11 laps, so actually we're doing quite well on fuel. Just trying not to over ever break the car coming into the Lesmos. A little squirrely there in the middle. I lit him up for a second. I don't need to do that. Just nice, consistent, smooth exits. That's what you need in these cars. It's like Montas has got it figured out. He's back up to me. He's going to be able to get my, my slipstream no problem here. We've got Matias in front in the Porsche. Let's see what line he takes. The inside, I'll go around the outside. The marshal showed the blue flag for like for the littlest amount of time. it out of the corner nice and easy all right Mont montas is back up to me Montas is one of the, the folks that actually made this mod. Um, so if anybody knows how it works and how to get speed out of it, they would be they would be that person. We'll see what he wants to do here. If he wants to try to work together and break away from the other two, which I would love, or if, or if he wants to try to pass me. Just check real quick my tires. 98, 98. Yeah, we're not going to change tires. I don't, I don't really see the reason to, and I think we'll save slight, a slight amount of time during the pit stop if we don't. Luckily, there's enough, enough time around the oval here where you can you can change stuff. It's going to slide up the inside. I'm just slow in the Lesmos for some reason. It's alright. Things are working out. I don't need to really change what I'm doing. Just keep 
doing what I'm doing. Yeah, we're good on fuel. It says I'm going to make it another 10 laps or so. And so we'll go over halfway. We'll still fill it all the way just to be safe. Fuel uh, pit stops are long in this series, though. It's going to take over two minutes to fill the tank. So it's one of those things to be aware of. I don't know if that's slipstream or meant to slow down a little bit there, but just come alongside him. A little, little slippy there, coming into Parabolica. It says my crew is ready for a pit stop. We do not need a pit stop yet. <laughs> That's, that's our factor too, being confused about how far I can go. We actually want to, I got to remember to shut off the engine when we're sitting in the pit stall because the car will overheat if you leave it on. Yeah, I mean, I don't need to save fuel, so I'm not really worried about it. Water temperature looks good. He looks like he's going to come up the inside. I'll let him have it. Why not? See if we can use that to uh, to break the slipstream with the two behind us. It would be nice if we could just get just him and I. So we didn't have to worry about Peter and Larry behind us, but I don't know if we're going to be so lucky. Yeah, we'll just leave him ready. Oh my god. Got a little bit of craziness coming up behind me. Yeah, we're, we're just in a pack, man. It is Monza. This is historic Monza for sure. Just slipstream battles. Anybody that plays Grand Prix Legends online here knows. Just really, somebody needs to mess up to get out of the slipstream. But I'm having such a good race with these guys. I hope uh, I hope we can get to the end like this because it could be really exciting with you know two laps to go trying to figure out who's gonna win out of our little little pack here, a mini race within a race. Side here, Christian. Starting to get to that point in the race where we don't really know who's leading. <laughs> who's leading who? Who are we lapping? Oh, he's right on me. I don't know if I surprised him with the braking. I've been braking at the exact same spot every lap. See a car in the pits up there. I'm up to sixth position, so maybe somebody's in the pits. I don't know who it would have been. If you weren't here at the start, the top six, we're all, they're all the Jags and the Lancias, and they're just a lot, they're a lot faster <laughs> cars than, than us. So we're really fighting for seventh position in this race, unless they have some kind of issue up there. We are technically all in the same class together. Have I been sixth for a while? I didn't notice. I'm just focused on the driving right up to the wall here. Hands are sweating. It makes it hard. This wheel's hard. <laughs> it gets really slick, and my gloves aren't really grippy with it, so. All right. 
Looks like we're no longer going to be leading this pack. Ugh. I don't really need to go three wide. I don't know why. Why we're doing it. Oh, Matos got a little sideways there. It's a little sketchy going around the outside here. This through the through the Lesmos. We're in a heck of a battle. It's going to be interesting how the pit stops work out. If everybody pits at the same time, or if we pit slightly different, or I don't know. I need to be perfect in my pit box and my pit entry and all of that. Yes. Yeah, I need I need leather gloves. I think would be the right kind of gloves for a wheel like this. Oh, didn't really get my foot on the brake pedal right that time. Montas locks him up as well. No, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, it's 100% my fault. I take out all of us. Oh, I feel really bad about that. what happened. I just didn't get the brakes on well enough. Ugh, I hate when I do that. Crashing yourself is one thing. Taking out everybody else. It looks like we're all going to be relatively able to continue, so I hope nobody's car is hurt. So it looks like Larry's the one that got the big benefit from all of that out front. Probably will get some kind of penalty for that one. All right. Just continue to focus in here. <laughs> I'm under arrest. I mean, that is 100% my fault. I just... I didn't get the brakes down enough somehow, and then I kind of overdid it and locked him up. I just wasn't able to get slowed down enough. I might have been able to get around the corner myself, but I basically took the apex away from, from Peter, probably. All right, just focus in. The car feels okay, so I'm, I'm lucky there. We'll have to make sure it doesn't try to fix damage in the pit stop, because I think we're fine. Not far off pit stop time. It's also the car is changing a lot because of the fuel levels. All right, we'll take this nice and easy this time. And hopefully they don't decide to go bowling to get me back. sure we don't repair the damage because yeah I just hate I mean you never want to wreck somebody else's race I'm happy to see that we probably are all okay after that so as far as mistakes go it could have been worse but I, you never want to be the one making the mistakes but whatever it happens if they 
Hopefully they're not too mad about it. And uh, we can continue to have this awesome race because we are having a really good race together. Just going to stick with Matas here. We're going to catch back up to Lari. Now, I can't pit yet. I would not make it to the end if I pit. Pit window opens lap 25. Unless, unless I know I'm going to save fuel, but I don't know that. But we'll see if we can maybe pit on a different lap. It might be a good idea. Also, might be good to pit together so that we don't um, don't come out alone without a slipstreaming partner. Because we're gaining so much time per lap because of the slipstreaming. Jeez, check up a lot there. Got on the curbing. Whoa, that was a very close call. All right. A couple mistakes here towards the end of the stint's not good. We've got a long ways to go. close one there too. Montas takes a really wide line out of Ascari. It's interesting. Locked him up a bit here into Parabolica. He's gonna hold on to it. That's that's a very close one. Should be just close enough to get the slipstream here on the oval. right in their tracks. Seems they don't they don't drive quite as high as I like to. Alright. Probably four more laps till we pit. And uh, I, I do kind of want to pit with these guys, although it would be fun to try to do like some kind of overcut, undercut, but the risk of doing more than one lap alone is just not worth it. So I'd have to see when these guys are going to pit. Once we get close, I mean, i got to get to lap 25. So I'm not going to pit before then, but... All right, they caught Larry. It's actually pulled them away from me a bit. I feel like we're back at the beginning of the race again. to scare myself here through Curva Grande. I'd say Larry has been the most sensible of all of us. <laughs> kind of minding their own business in the white the white Ferrari. Oh big slide. That's an incredible save by Peter. Oh Nico Hillebrand's out. That's one of the Jags up front. So that's gonna bump us all up a position. Maybe that's why I'm in sixth, or was in sixth at that one point. Now I gotta remember as well, we're going to finish probably one lap down. Oh, it looks like Frank's behind us, too, so Frank had some issues as well. So, we're potentially racing for a top five here. Just 
slide through the apex there. Really need to do that. Yeah, I think we're racing for a top five now by winning this little battle that we're in, so. These two in front breaking away a little bit here. It's not good. I need Peter to come back to me. Mark on the low side, but he'll stay down low in the Porsche there. Not even halfway yet. So much has happened. I've almost died, I think, two or three times. Took everybody out once. But luckily, we're all still running. I don't think any of us have really lost top speed. There's one of the leading Lancias there going on to the oval. So we're getting close to the pit stop. Just a couple laps now until we jump in the pits, fill her up, get back out there, and see how this all works out in the end. We're losing the two in front just a little bit. into the Lesmo, Lesmo 1. The car is very light now and it gets very dancy on the exits of corners. They seem to be ultra, ultra smooth. Peter up on my right. We closed in a little bit on these two in front. It's quite slow through the parabolica this time. Side by side with Peter's not exactly my definition of fun. Yeah, the mechanical failures absolutely over revving will damage the engine and I really I think I've done it a couple times so I'm, I'm really hoping that doesn't come to bite me at the end of the race but water temp looks good right now so we'll just uh, cross my fingers it didn't didn't damage the engine I have no idea what I did when I when I caused that accident if I over revved it then or if that was just all brakes oh Jackson's out uh, I couldn't get the cutting hand to the finish I don't know what happened to the dirt myself as well it's all right I think we are pulling these two in a little bit Oh, 
Oh, Jackson, you blew the motor. I'm really hoping that doesn't happen to me. Did you over rev it a lot or did it just randomly break on you? Because I think I might have over revved the engine a couple times. Whoa. Dancing a little bit here. Scoot around the outside of this Porsche. All right. One more lap. We're going to pit on the next lap. Oh, we'll be ready to pit on the next lap. See if these guys will pit as well. Oh, he's pitting right now. No, I need to go another lap. Sorry, Peter. I just know I'm sticking to my strategy from the start of the race. I'm not going to hope that I can save an extra lap. I think we'll probably be fine if we pit this lap, but we're going to go one more lap. I was wondering why he was on the brake pedal there. He was just trying to tell me that he was pitting. This is when you really need the uh, Grand Prix Legends hand in the air, <laughs> waving. Appreciate everybody tuning in today. It's been an all right race so far. It's been a really tight race. I've made a couple big mistakes at some points, which I'm not proud of, but otherwise it's going quite well. We're fighting probably for a fifth place finish if we can, if we can win in our little pack here. And, uh, you know, you never know from there if any other DNFs up front might, might change things a bit. But we should probably be pitting this next lap and uh, filling her up with fuel. And then, and then we're going to the end. It's a 50-lap race. We're halfway through. It's been very intense so far. I don't expect it to let up if we can make it to the end. Also got to remember the pit lane's got no speed limit and there are collisions, which is a rarity in, in the sim racing world, but you know, we just gotta be really careful. But it's also a place where we could lose a lot of time. And as you've seen, tenths of a second are what, what's in this right now. We're also packed up and close. But if things look good this time, I am gonna come in and pit. And hope, uh, hope everything goes well just to get through the pit stop without any major damage or anything. All right, we'll request the pit stop just to make sure it's all ready to go for us. I don't know if anybody here has ever played the flight sim, Rise of Flight. They have a whole, it's a World War I flight sim, and they have a whole, like, gesture, gesture uh, set of controls and all of that. Looks like we're gaining a Lari here as we'll come down to the Parabolica. It's going to let off early. Just get it slowed down. All right. Hope is here that we all kind of pit together. Just watch for my pit stall. I don't want to overrun the pit stall. I don't want to hit anybody. Yeah, it looks like Montes is going to come in as well. All right, just nice and easy. You could, you could gain some time here, but it's better to be safe. Right in front of me. I thought we were going to share a stall. All right, 112 seconds. Relax for just a minute. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Ugh, I'm going to tear up. <laughs> Appreciate y'all tuning in today. It's been a nice, nice crowd in here. I hope you're enjoying it. It's been a lot of fun. It's been scary. Hopefully, I can get out of this pit box. One piece. Oh, I didn't shut off the engine. All right. I just did. We we're going to overheat if I didn't do that. Thank you. You're all telling me exactly as I did it. <laughs> just don't want to overheat. I'll turn it back on with 10 seconds to go. Montas should be out about the same time as me. And, uh, and then it's just a run to the finish. It's going to be a crazy slipstreaming battle. And... I don't know. I don't know who's going to come out on top today. We got one of the Lancias coming into pit. We got to be really careful about cars coming in as we come out. Uh, I just hope I can get out of the pits in one piece here. No, 
another Jag comes in. I can see one car coming in back there. All right, 82 seconds, 83 seconds. I'll turn it on with 100 seconds. We don't overheat or anything. Get back out to racing speed. This is going to be tricky. I'm going to have to reverse here. Oh, I stalled it. Montes is still in the pits. That was the worst pit exit of all time. All right, let's just get back on the circuit. I don't know what happened. Peter's now eight seconds ahead. Ah. Uh, I just wasn't going to be able to uh, to pull out with Manta sitting there and then reversing it. I was trying not to over rev and I stalled it. Rookie mistakes. Well, it's gravity fed fueling. You put 50 gallons of fuel in the car and that's going to take a while. Yeah, not sure what happened to Mantos. Okay, we're 13 seconds off Peter. I'm fighting with Larry here. And we've resumed sixth position. Now, I gotta remember, I've got a full tank of fuel now. So give it a little extra on the braking. But uh, I don't know if we're gonna catch Peter. We're just gonna have to try our best here. He's not gonna have a slipstreaming partner, and I do. So that could help. But Mantas, if he's behind us quite a ways, I don't think he'll have what it takes to catch up. It's just going to be, unless we make some mistakes here, it's going to be really hard to catch us. All right, into Curva Grande, full fuel. It's kind of like the beginning of the race again, except I do have slightly more worn tires, but they're really, really barely worn, so we should be fine. Water temp seems to be calming down, so I think we avoided blowing the engine. All right, just nice solid laps now. It looks like Larry wants to work with me, so hopefully we can catch up to Peter. If Larry tries to pass, I'll just let them by and, uh, and use, the, use the slingshot to hopefully just make speed, but it'd probably be quicker if we stay in a line. Yeah, unfortunately, the relative box I have is from a sim hub. It's it's going to go up and down as we technically get closer and far away. It's not it's not predicting the time very well. So, really, only compare it lap over lap is the only way to reliably use it. Unless we're like within sight of each other. Oh, Larry is right there on me. Made it through the tough part. Now it's really just doing solid laps to the end here. But, okay. Entering the oval, we're 11 seconds behind Peter. So we'll look at it next lap and see what it is. That's the, that's the best way to tell how the gap is coming. Up on speed, I mean, I'm, I'm two or three miles an hour faster just because Larry's sitting right behind me, so it does work even even if you're the leading car, if the second car kind of just stays in line right up to the fence. Using, using my oval racing, I guess, to uh, run the ultra high line, but it's the fastest way around. You just scrub off the least amount of speed, so that's why that's, why that's better. All right, we're in fifth position. Catching Tom D here as we come up to Curva Grande. It's going to be a little, little late. Just make it.
make our intentions clear that we're going to go up the inside here of Tom. Oh, hot, hot, hot. <laughs> Tom goes back underneath those crazy three liter cars. Oh boy, that was, that was tense. Larry did the same thing behind me. I never got loose there before. That was a bit high on the old revs. I don't know what kind of car Tom's driving here. Two, two liter though, so it's faster in the corners than we are. We'll catch him down the back straight here and, and dispatch him. But a lot less weight in the car, a lot less horsepower, just makes it a little easier to accelerate at first. Then corner, of course. All right, we'll take him up the right side. Yeah, it's just always jarring once you run up to a slower car like that and then they're faster than you on part of the track. Definitely, definitely tricky. Oh my god, Larry, you're making me nervous. <laughs> Alright, we got some more cars in the pits maybe, or maybe they're DNF'd. Probably been like that the whole race. All right, 10 seconds. I think we gained a second on Peter. Maybe a little less than that. 10.5, 10.6, so a few tenths. We're just going to have to stick at it and hope, hope that we catch him. We did have kind of a weird lap this last lap with the lap traffic, so potentially we can gain more per lap. It's going to take us all the laps to get to him, unless, uh, unless he has some errors or something. Fighting for fourth place, then. If I'm up to fifth, Peter must be in fourth. Oh, one step off the podium. And these cars, not bad. I'd love to stay in the slipstream a bit longer, but I just want to make it clear that we're going to pass up the inside. I still, I think we're on the lead lap still, but I would expect at some point we're going to get lapped. So we'll probably be doing 49 laps today. But you never know. I don't, I don't know what's gone up up front today. Peter's seven seconds up. All right, we've gained quite a bit. I can see him up there. He's the red car up the road. So we're definitely pulling him in. Just got to keep doing what we're doing. Yeah, if you want this exact version of the mod, you can join the league's discord and it's, it's posted on there there's no secrets or anything but um i the public version of this mod is still wonderful 
and uh, I, I highly recommend it. One of my most played mods in our factory too, by far. Right against the fence. Let's see what kind of lap time we're doing here. Forty nine flat. It's so cool. I can hear Larry behind me getting off the throttle slightly before I am coming into the corners, and that's it's reassuring actually to know that they've gotten off the throttle. I don't really have to look at the mirror as much. Although he was quite close that time. Yeah, I just have to be careful. The tires are going to get a little slick here towards the end, which is not 100% ideal. But I think we saved like 30 seconds by not changing tires, which is uh, pretty huge. in front. Alright, we're gaining on Peter, so just gonna keep doing what we're doing. Don't over overstep the car too much, and uh, it's gonna be a mad, a mad finish if this holds like this. If we all are together on the final few laps. All right, up to six seconds back off Peter now. It was at 11 when we came out of the pits, so we've nearly halved half the gap. laps of fuel to go so we're, we're fine on fuel it's gonna be not super over full though all right I can see Nicholas in the rear in the uh, relative behind us so that's the leader coming up to lap us so he'll, he'll definitely get to us before the end and uh, put us a lap down so we'll probably only be racing to lap 49 which will help help fuel we don't have to worry about it under seven, so we're good. All right, Peter's right there. It's only gonna be a couple more laps we'll be to him. But still quite a few lap, quite a few laps to go. And uh, we'll just have to figure out our slipstreaming order <laughs> and work together until some point we'll have to decide when we go. Just like a plate race in a NASCAR, series race like when do you go still gotta get to him though it's not far off though I can see him up there moving to the inside of a blue car Larry behind me is saving quite a lot of fuel and uh, just taking it nice and easy back there I'm a little jealous I get to set the, <laughs> the pace and try to push the lap time Probably working my tires a bit more than him. 
Yeah, we're on lap 30 right now of 50, but we're probably going to be lapped by the leaders who are in much faster cars than us, so... Or not much faster, but two or three seconds a lap, which, which adds up, so... Probably do 49 laps. All right, we got Matt on the low side there. Yeah, five out of 30 is my position. So I'm fifth in the race overall. Um, also in class, technically the, the leading cars are in the same class as us, even though they are a little bit faster, right up to the wall. High lines, fastest line around the oval, just to stick right there. We've got one slower car here, we'll pass on the front stretch, I think. There's two, oh, there's two cars right to the right of us are racing for the lead, I think, or, or for position, not for the lead necessarily. Come down to Curva Grande. Peter's not far up the road now. Yeah, we're in the three liter plus category. And uh, the Ferrari 375 that I'm driving is a little old for 1956 standards. Just can't quite keep up with the Jag and the Lancia, especially on a track that's so fast like this. It just doesn't quite have the top speed. We're down maybe six, seven miles an hour, top speed. Still a wonderful car to drive though, and we're having, dare I say, it might be a better race than the front race. We'll have to see what their race was like after, but can't really argue with the race we've had so far. Despite my attempts to destroy it, we're still in a group together like this. All right, there's Peter ahead of us. Might get to him this time on the oval, but certainly next lap will be close. And despite the color of the car behind me, it, it is also a Ferrari. Once again, I got weird on the brake pedal again there, but I was able to get it this time. If you missed it earlier, I took out <laughs> Peter and Montas, who was, we were racing with at the beginning of the race, just from outbreaking myself into Parabolica, basically. And I've uh, been really lucky that we were all able to continue relatively unharmed, although Montas had a very long pit stop, and I have to think, it might have been the cause of it, which I feel feel bad about that. Okay. A little bump up here, right here. So this, this steering wheel is 360 millimeters. So it's about, it's the same size that would be in a Cobra, which is what it's modeled after, so. It really, having a big steering wheel helps with these kind of cars. It's that you need to drive them slowly. <laughs> it's nice, slow inputs and a, a big wheel like this really helps. I've found. But it's definitely not, not necessary. All right. We are caught up to Peter. Now the dance begins. Now, for those talking about national colors for cars, they, they pretty much always lined up with the entrance nationality. And so, 
you know, you see like David Piper drove a green Ferrari because he's from the UK, but he owned his own team. And so that's why you saw, you see a lot of drivers from different nations racing the red Ferraris, but it's because Ferrari, the Italian brand, entered the cars, the Italian manufacturer. So they would paint their own cars in their national racing color. That's traditionally how it was done back, back in the day. Oh, another car is out. It's been a while since we had a retiree, but Jonathan D had something happen. Maybe we'll see some attrition towards the end here. I don't know. Hopefully it's it's not myself. That would be that would be ideal. Gaining on Peter now, we're definitely in the slipstream, so this will help pull us, me and Larry both along. Larry did such a nice job helping us get get up to Peter, because if Larry wanted to battle with me, then it would not have been very easy to catch up to Peter. So the fact that Larry stuck out back and uh, helped push me along, basically, helped us catch up to Peter a lot, lot faster. But now we're up to him, and uh, I don't know what we're going to do here. Got a nice run on the front stretch. Probably just go for the pass here. Pass for fourth position right at the line. <laughs> Man, imagine if that was the finish of the race. Larry's going to come with me. steer there through the Lesmos. This would be an amazing place to sit if you had no fear. There's no fence or anything in front of the spectators there. But it would be an awesome place to sit if everything went perfectly. All right, Nicholas is 12 seconds off of us now. Yeah, I don't know how long Larry's going to work with me, but we'll see. Just have to kind of go with it. I don't know if we'll pull away from Peter. We actually pulled away from him a little bit there. So maybe maybe Larry and I can separate ourselves from Peter and just kind of decide this amongst each other. I will say that these cars are very good ones to learn how to heal and tow, because if you don't, if you brake aggressively enough and don't do it, you will spin them out. You might see, I don't always aggressively heal and tow in these cars, because I'm trying not to over rev. And so I'll, I'll kind of let the clutch out a bit slower and let the revs build that way, which would be very hard on the clutch in real life. But I think it, um, we've got a little more mechanical sympathy here in the sim. Yeah, I don't know how far off the podium we are, but we'll just keep pushing. There's nothing I can do other than run the fastest laps that I can from here to the end of the race. Get around Tom there. Nine. It was a bit hot that time at a Curva Grande, able to get it slowed down. Okay. 
catching up to one of the Cunninghams that we saw at the very start of the race on. I got a terrible start if you were here. I got passed by a few cars because the Lancia in front of me just didn't accelerate. And uh, I had to pass back the Cunningham here for Robin. We're on lap 34 of 50. Things are going all right. Larry is fighting with me for fourth position. We got Peter not far behind, also in the little battle with us, but see if they can stay on our slipstream. And uh, we're going to get lapped by the leader, so we'll probably only do 49 laps. Just got to keep it nice and smooth here. slipstream here off Robin in front. Cunningham's pretty quick. It is, I think this is the smaller of the Cunninghams, the Ferrari-based one. It just doesn't have the top speed that we do. That's its big, big downfall. The other Cunningham that Jackson was driving is very heavy. <laughs> it's a heavy car. Yeah, Peter's fallen quite far behind now, so it's really just Larry and I here. Or is it Larry? Larry or Larry? I assume he's, he's Finnish, that's my guess, by the last name. All right, rock the high line around the porches. It's be a little narrow on the exit here. Be able to get it. Whoa, there we go. All right, nice, nice slipstream on Robin in front. We'll just use this to cruise across the line right by them. So there, get it. Get the revs smash for a second so we don't spin out into the Lesmos. Just left foot braking through second Lesmos. It's the only only corner where I left foot brake on this track. It's interesting. Oh, missed the gear. It's been a while since I've done that. Larry's gonna have a nice run on me. He's gonna choose to stay behind. He could have definitely tried to get a pass there. I didn't over rev too much. <laughs> I screamed out like it caused me physical pain. Well, I've allowed Peter to catch up quite a bit though. Larry's in a Ferrari as well, I believe, but I'm not sure the model. I think it's a similar Ferrari. It might be the Millamilia version, though. Should be about 15 laps to go. I'm wondering where the leaders are. Maybe we won't go a lap down. I have just enough fuel to make it. I'll have an extra lap of fuel, so I'm not worried about the I'm not worried about getting to the finish on fuel. 
Yeah, it's a North American racing team's Ferrari, so that's why it's U.S. colors. Oh, there's Montas going into the oval there. So he's still running, but lost lost a lot of time in the pit stops. Jumped a little sideways on me that time. He's probably watching me and saw me take out the two others earlier and <laughs> thinks I'm a, a crazy driver. I'm trying to keep it all together here. It's a long race. I know you would have double clutched these cars in real life, but by clutching, I'm already kind of at a disadvantage to somebody that's using auto clutch in this. So I'll take the uh, slightly less realistic, but still, still fun to do. All right, here comes Nicholas. Well, a little bit of stuttering there. Don't do that to me now. I wonder if he'll be able to catch me and pass me. I mean, it's just all about how much he's letting off. And if I've got that outside line, I feel pretty confident and unless he can clear me on the low side, that I can actually come out, come out of the last corner there a bit faster. Still got a ways to go before we try to sort out the end of this thing, but if I was him, I might even try it sooner just to test out and see, see what I'm able to do before the end of the race. When you heel toe, you blip when the clutch is in. So you try to match the revs while it's in neutral for that split second. So that once you let it into the gear, the, the transmission's already spinning at the same speed that the axle and the, the rest of it is. But you'll see I pretty much hit the throttle when I when I heel toe. I'm hitting the throttle basically as I'm pulling the clutch out. I will say heel towing in a sim, I, R Factor 2 does it pretty good, but it's still not quite like like a real car. Using the clutch in general in sims is, is pretty difficult. All right, up the inside of a slower car here. Let's take it nice and easy. Let me just set a record. Yeah, Nicholas is coming, so. If he gets around us, we'll do 49 laps, which I'm honestly all for. <laughs> Getting pretty tired at this point. It's just so much restraint in driving these cars and making sure you don't light the tires up at any point or miss a gear. races are a bit longer than our 
HRRC races where we have those at two hours. This is gonna be closer to three, I think, by the time we're done with it. Yeah, I will say my pedals, I, I have the Hussingveld sprint pedals and the clutch does have like a bite point where it, the spring, it's a dual action spring so it gets softer in the middle. So you can, oh, I get really close there. Come on now. I haven't hit the wall yet. At least I don't think I have. Um, you can kind of feel with the pedals, but it's still, you know, it's the best I've felt, but it's not uh, not exactly like a real car. Just trying to keep my eye, make sure at some point he's going to try to try to pass me. Ain't no way he's finishing behind me. I don't think. on the blip that time. You guys are making me think about it too much. It kind of needs to be just an automatic thing that you don't really think about. I always have a tough time. If I'm driving and I'm thinking about exactly what I'm doing, it's makes it worse. It needs to be kind of muscle memory. I, that's why I've found talking helps me disconnect just a little bit what I'm actually doing and I tend to do more consistent laps when I, when I talk, surprisingly. Make sure I hit those braking zones, braking markers, car slow down. I saw a red car back there and I was worried Peter was catching us, although he might be, but it's it's Nicholas. So here comes the leader of the race, Nicholas Kirsten. I gotta stick to the low side this time because I think Nicholas is gonna go around. Well, maybe not to the back stretch. God, it gets a little squirrely down here. Whoa, that was sketchier than I thought it was gonna be. All right, here comes Nicholas. This will be good. It's on the second corner so we can take the high line that I'm comfortable with. Come on. Just pump the brakes there. <laughs> Make sure he got in front. All right, we're going to pick up a whole heap of speed because I bet I bet we stay with him in the slipstream. But uh, there's no sense in trying to pass here. All right, 10 laps to go then. Yeah, the speed of that car, that's why we can't stick with him, unfortunately. I wish we could go for the overall, but AOJ, I had the same thought. I almost, I almost said that at one point. The higher you go on the oval, the faster it is because you scrub off less speed. It's just you're flirting with the wall. All right, Nicholas has left us.
not going to be close enough to get the slipstream this lap, unfortunately. into it. It's getting a little dark. I wonder if I should turn my headlights on. Larry is being the best ally in this race. But when when is he going to cross me? I mean, maybe Peter had damage from when I nailed him going 50 miles an hour faster. So, I still I feel so bad about it. We'll discuss it after the race, I guess. Yeah, I just don't know where he's going to go for it and then what to do. I really feel like if I, if I just stay true to the high line, that he's... He's not going to be able to just pass alone on the low side. I just don't think, unless he gets a slipstream, that he'll be able to actually pass me on the low side. So you might try to do it in one of these corners. But then I'll have, you know, the great invention of Monza is that the oval is the last part. So then I would be behind him. And man, I do not know what what I would do, but I think trying to get to the high line would be the right way to do it and just ride the wall, ride it like I haven't ridden it the whole race. Catching Gerard here. He's in ninth, so not not slow by any stretch. He's going to go low. Somehow we're ahead of Reese. Reese Reese is not far behind, and Reese is on the same lap as us. Maybe some scuffle early on. So oh, fourth place might not be secure. <laughs> it's 20, I saw he was 20 seconds back when we were on the oval here. So Reese is in one of the Lancias, but somehow he lost a bunch of time at some point and is behind me. But uh, we saw how, how quick Nicholas was able to get around, so there might be more into this story yet. hot into the Lesmos, but I was actually able to hold it. Tires got grip in them yet. If he 
think the oval here is bumpy. Go race at like Fuji with the Daiichi corner. Or Avos. Although Avos ring is, is fairly smooth, but that's bricks. Remember, the oval was built and resurfaced in 1954 and 55 to raise it to the height it's at. Although it was built in the 30s, it was much, much shallow banking. And uh, they really, really raised it up to try to make Monza into this ultra high speed track, which is so wild looking at it with modern eyes that this is a real thing that happened. Yeah, look at Sitges. Citrus Spain, the Terramar. Look at Brooklyn's and how bumpy that track was. So oval technology was not an easy thing and really uh, took a long time to perfect it. They did one thing perfectly on this track and they got the entrance and the exit to the uh, ovals, oval corners perfect. It was really high that time. Yeah, Monterley is a pretty bumpy track. All right, got a few lapped cars coming up. Now, Larry is is looking around back there. Still got eight laps to go. I don't know why the shadows are doing that. It's, it's frustrating. Just R Factor 2 things. laps to go. I got 9.6 laps of fuel according to the uh, auto calc. So we're good. We're good on fuel. Just hoping Reese doesn't catch us. We can truly battle it out here for fourth at the end. But if not, it'll be a battle for the top five. He's saving his tires or something. He's, he's backing off so early into all the corners. I mean, he's just using the slipstream to stay with me. Right out to the edge there. Yeah, our Factor 2 surface, there's more rubber on the track now than there's been at any point during this race. See Peter back there is 12 seconds off us. It's really just Larry and I for now, unless Reese can catch us before the end. There's really not gonna be anything I can do to hold Reese back. Oh, Gerard is out. Oh, it's always a pity when you get retirements at the very end of a race. Yeah, maybe Lars has a fuel thing, just saving fuel. Certainly, certainly you would be saving fuel. Catching another car in front quite quick. They're on the high side. This could get interesting. To let off the throttle just a little bit there. Whoa. Whoa. Walked it up right to the wall. Didn't hit it. I come across line, seven laps to go. It's crazy to think this is only half the race, real distance.
67 is going to stay wide. Sneak up the inside of map. Trying to stay focused here. It's a long race. I'd only done a single stint in practicing, so doing two in a row is, is a lot. We're getting towards the end of it. Remember, it's a 50 lap race, but we got put down a lap by the leaders, so we'll be doing 49 laps, and it's a battle for fourth position between Larry and myself. We're hoping to not see Reese Gard Gardner behind us because they're, he's, uh, he's driving the Lancia and he'll definitely be able to pass us quite easily if, if he catches us. So hopefully we can hold on to the fourth, battle for fourth, and then see see what Larry's gonna do at the end here. I'm just waiting for a lunge or something at some point. Cranking out laps now, 248.5, it's pretty good. Larry is backing off so early into the corners. They're able to stay with me though just because of the, the slipstream. But no doubt, I think Larry could push a lot harder. I just, it's not a lot. Oh, there's Reese, 10 seconds off. It's gonna be close. I think he's gonna get, get us though. We'll have to see here. There's a lot of grip on the track. It's as I slide sideways there, but it definitely feels grippier than it has the entire race. Reese 9.2 seconds behind as we get into the oval. This is where he's gonna get a ton of time on us. Just that that Lancia has got six, seven miles an hour on us, which is a lot. Coming to the line, four laps to go. Oh, he's right there. Just let me know.
Therese gets to us on the last lap too. That's just gonna make things ultra spicy, won't it? Nicely through the Lesmos that time. I feel really happy with my overall pace. It's that one one big mistake. Otherwise, it's been a pretty good race. I'm trying not to let that one thing bring me down. But I do feel bad. I feel like I ruined Montos and Peter's race potentially. But we'll see. We'll see. I'll talk to him after the race. slow exit to the parabolic I just spun the tires a little too much wow Larry got sideways that lap. Heard the engine note go up for him back there. is up to seven seconds behind. It's gonna be close at the end. Got three laps to go. the curb that time quite a lot. Ugh. Man. Larry's being very nice behind me. Probably scared him. That was a, such a mess through the Lesmos that time. Come on. It's just three laps to go. It's going to let Reese really pull in on us. I just grabbed the, the curb on the inside and it wanted to spin me out. get it onto the front stretch. I can see Reese back there, so fortunately we're not gonna not gonna be fighting for fourth, we're gonna be fighting for fifth. I mean there's really no way for me to keep Reese behind. I'm not gonna do anything stupid. Battles between Larry and I and not Reese has just got a much faster car. And I must have had some some kind of problem during the race. But if it was the last lap and he was there, I would do I would try my best to keep him behind. But there's Two more laps. It's just, it's just a lot to try to keep a faster car behind without doing something really dirty. I'm not gonna just gonna give it to him, but if he puts it in there, I'm not gonna make it too difficult. Okay. Well. 
of the front stretch. We got two slower cars here. We got two more laps to go. Tom in front. We're going to catch Tom right at Curva Grande. I had to wait. Not have been good to launch it in there. It's going to give me a little bit of a gap to Lari. Come on. Nice exit. Nice exit. It's probably not enough. It's only a half second. He's going to get passed by Reese first. It was a good, it was a good try to stay ahead of Reese. And maybe if I hadn't bottled up the Lesmos a couple laps ago, could have stayed ahead, but I think I think Reese would have had us either way. Two laps to go. I mean, it's just waiting to happen, pretty much. All right, get through the parabolica here, though. Got a little little bit of a gap to Larry. Reese was looking up the inside there. Sorry, I need all the track to accelerate. Larry is quite far back. I might actually be able to draft here with Reese and get in front of Larry or stay in front of Larry. Come on, Reese. Let's go. Oh, you're my best friend in the whole world. South Pot Racer is my favorite YouTube channel. No contest. Everybody should go subscribe. He's streaming on Twitch right now. Reese, you're a beautiful, beautiful man. Oh my god. <laughs> a little fast there. I'm just going to sit here and uh, use this extra speed, pull away from Larry. It's going to be a relatively tame last lap. Reese is in Australia, which is, you're seeing a little bit of that, but I don't even know what time it is in Australia right now, but thank you, Ian. Everybody go thank Reese. I feel a little bad, but it's just how it worked out. All right, we'll come up, start the final lap. Uh, the racer in me wants to send it, but I just know he's got more speed anyway. Put the pressure on. I'll try to put the pressure on as much as I can. Come down to the Lesmos for the last time. I think this is the final lap. It should be. Oh my God, it's 9.30 in the morning. What time did he start? <laughs> All right, we'll get through. Accelerate out of Lesmos. This has been such a difficult part of the track the entire race. I'm trying to stay with him, but he's just very fast. Well, the slipstream, if you think about it, look at the front of these cars. It's basically a big wall hitting the air. The slipstream does a lot. All right, come down to the Parabolica. Dust being kicked up on the inside somehow. Reese. Reese, buddy. All right, we'll get out onto the front stretch. There's one trip around the oval now. And we should see that checkered flag waving as we come around. Fingers crossed. It's so fast, he's a day ahead of me, but uh, that really spiced things up. I mean, it would have been nice to finish fourth, but I could have very easily finished 
back in sixth if uh, if Reese hadn't been there to pull me along. And I don't know what happened to Larry through the lap traffic, but was able to just eke out a little bit on him. Wait, there's one more lap to go. Why? Why am I? <laughs> why am I thinking there's only? This was the last lap. All right, one more to go. Oh my God. It's been a long race. I'm trying to enjoy the last lap though. We got Martin Bear in front, one of the classic HRRC drivers. All right, I think we got one more lap now. Why did I think that was the last lap? I got mixed up in my brain at some point. We'll just do a nice, nice smooth lap again. These two, I don't know if they're racing for the win or something, but that looks fun. I think I just jumped a lap in my head at some point. All right, now to the Lismos for the last time. There's tricky corners in these cars. A little, a little happy on the throttle there, through there. To be fair, my start was fine. It was really whatever the car was in front of me that had a really slow start and I couldn't go anywhere. All right, come around the Parabolica. This time for the last time, Get it on the oval here. We're, we're the first car as a lap down, Reese and I. Not far off the leader, 30 seconds ahead. Nicholas is gonna come around to win. But I'm not gonna do anything crazy on the on the oval here in the last lap. It's a nice, simple line. Got a car length off the wall. All right, coming to the oval. Should see the checkered flag waving. I really hope we do. Get it on the front stretch. There it is, waving. I'm very happy with that. Fifth place, I don't think I could have really done any better with this car against everybody. Reese was just able to get back in front of me then, but he, he should have been in front of me anyway, so I'll have to figure out what happened with him there at some point. Ugh, guys, I'm tired. That was a really, really, it's just so much precision in driving these cars. Like you, you have to be so gentle on all the controls and everything. And my best friend in the whole world here, Reese, he, he really helped me get the fourth position and, and not have, I mean, it would have been fun to see how Larry would have managed the end there, but oh, I don't have a horn button mapped. Jiggle my headlights. Oh, my, my arm is cramping <laughs> from all that. Uh, I hope it was fun to watch. That was a lot of fun to do. The HSO League, they put on some great races and, uh, Here's Larry coming up behind. We got Martin coming around the side. It was a great race. I, I feel so bad that I, I just outbroke myself going into Parabolica there early on. And I'm happy it seems like both Peter and, and Montas were able to continue. I don't know why it, uh, the, you know, the pit stop itself was so 
so long for them. I'll have to talk to him after. Maybe I'll get a penalty for it. I don't know. But it was a lot of fun. If you enjoyed it, you know, let me know. Leave a comment after or something. I, you know, maybe do some more races with them depending on the tracks. I don't think I'm going to do the whole championship. But uh, it could be fun to do one a month or something like that just to just to try it out. I'm seeing a black flag that the marshals are holding. I hope I'm not getting a black flag. Yeah, we'll look at the whole results here in a second. We'll go back to the pits and uh, we'll quickly look at all the results and everything together. Here comes Frank. Frank finished back in ninth, it looks like, so something happened. Frank was very quick, so. <laughs> nice drift coming out of the corner. Look at that. Showing off a little bit, but. Oops, some crashing behind me. Flown engines. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, well, exit the car here. What a race. Ugh. So happy to, I'm so happy to have finished, but it looks like Nicholas Kirsten is gonna get the win from Erevan ahead of Austin in the two Jags. So Lancia wins over Jaguar, we got two Jags up there. Reese Gardner is able to get around us with just a couple laps to go to get back up to fourth. I'll have to find out what happened there. And uh, I've come away with a top five in the little Ferrari after starting in seventh position, I think it was, or ninth, ninth position, up to fifth. I'm pretty happy with that. Larry was right with me. He really helped me out the whole race and uh, was it, you know, got me, got me to that that position. So I have to thank them very much for that. Peter was able to come by in seventh, and Montas came back in eighth position, just one lap down as well. Frank fell back to ninth. And it looks like Yuka finished uh, the winner of the three-liter class ahead of Christian. Robin stuck in the middle there with the uh, the old Cunningham. Martin Bear finishes first in the two thousand uh, two two-liter category, the two thousand CCs, ahead of Tom D, Darren Andrews. Good battle between them. I don't know how much it was. I'm not going to be able to see the rest. It looks like Matias won the uh, fifteen hundred CC class and everything. But all right. What a race. What a race. I appreciate everybody everybody tuning in today. I hope you had a lot of fun. Like I said, leave a comment on the video afterwards if, if you have any thoughts about me maybe doing more of these. Uh, I should be back with something else similar to this. Maybe too similar to this, but... Ugh. Maybe more similar to this in a, uh, a couple weeks. We'll see. But slightly different. Maybe more exciting in some ways. Um, but yeah, overall the race, I'm pretty happy with, with how I raced, not having raced these cars in a long time. And I know all these guys are very good, um, uh, and kind of constantly race them. So I think I could be very happy with that, but I'm bummed. I made contact there in the middle with, with Monty or, uh, Montas and, and Peter. I have to go apologize to them a hundred times. Never want to hit somebody else, make your own mistakes, but, um, live and learn from it. Ah, uh, I see you, Peter, in here. I'm so, I'm so sorry I ran into you. I, I feel so bad about it, but that happens sometimes, I guess. Yes, it was proper slipstream battling. It was a really fun race, and uh, hopefully showed some folks I haven't. I, I've seen a few of you in here before that maybe haven't seen stuff like this before, so. The sim racing world is varied and wide, and I hope a whole bunch of you that enjoy this and do sim racing yourself go, uh, go check out HSO. The link to their forum is in the description of the stream and they mostly do stuff on discord talking and stuff so um it's fun they do races all the time all different uh all different types of cars and stuff too but all right i think that's gonna be it for me though i appreciate you all tuning in i hope you have a great rest of your sunday evening thank you all have a good one